Okay everyone, today we're going to be seeing if it's actually possible to carbonate soda with Pop Rocks. So if you've never heard of Pop Rocks before, Pop Rocks are tiny little candies that are actually filled with pressurized CO2. And so when you put them in your mouth, this is what they sound like because you dissolve the outer layer of sugar. And so now the pressurized CO2 has a way to escape so it does a little pop. So it sounds like this when you put it in your mouth. So the question is, if we have a flat soda, a soda that you've opened and kind of left out and all the carbonation has gone out of it, can you actually repressurize it and recarbonate it with Pop Rocks? Let's see if it works. Okay, so in order to do this experiment, I need some flat soda. So in order to get some soda that doesn't have any carbonation in it, I'm going to put it in my vacuum chamber and degas it. So basically I'm lowering the atmospheric pressure around it and so the CO2 will more quickly dissolve out of the Coca-Cola and Sprite here. Make sure this is the real stuff. <sighs> yep. Okay, here's our Sprite. Okay, that should be good enough. So you can see the Sprite just bubbling out CO2 already. And the reason that's happening now is because it was at a higher pressure when it was in the Sprite, but once we opened it, we lowered the pressure. And so now the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide in the Sprite is higher than the atmosphere. And so there's a driving force for it to dissolve out into the atmosphere. And so in order to make that happen even faster, I'm gonna lower the outside pressure even more and so it should create an even greater driving force. Turn on my vacuum chamber. Three, two, one. There we go. Trying to get it to not overflow all over. You can see how much more is coming out of the Sprite than the uh, Coca-Cola here. Notice how the pressure is not dropping anymore because the CO2 keeps filling up the chamber. Okay, this should be some pretty flat soda now. So this could be actually just boiling now. Most likely all the CO2 is gone. Okay, let's let the air back in. Okay, let's try it out. Now <laughs> that is some flat soda. There's completely no carbonation whatsoever. Oh, that's so gross. I hate flat soda. Okay, first let's put in our Pop Rocks and then we'll pour in the flat soda. So I'll do green with Sprite and red with Coke to keep things balanced as all things should be. We're already crackling. Okay, now pour in our Sprite. Okay. So it barely even pressurized the bottle again. A little bit. Okay, that means we're gonna need more Pop Rocks. Okay, here we go.
So that's now 11 packets of Pop Rocks for the Sprite here. Let's try the Coke. Okay, pour our Coke in. Okay. So I'm shaking them because now that there's CO2 in the headspace here from the Pop Rocks, it's mixed with the air as well that I had in there, but there's CO2 in the headspace, so now I shake it to mix it into the liquid faster. So normally with a normal soda, shaking it will actually decrease the carbonation of the liquid in there. And that's because when you first get a soda and open it up, the partial pressure of the CO2 in the liquid is higher than the atmosphere. So you open it up and you let air in. So now there's a low partial pressure of CO2 in the head space up here. And so the CO2 wants to come out of the liquid. And so by shaking it, you're actually making that happen faster. So the CO2 comes out of the liquid into the head space. And so you have a lower carbonation of your liquid. But the only reason that happens is because the liquid is carbonated. But now that the liquid isn't carbonated, but, but the headspace is the higher partial pressure of CO2, now shaking it will increase the carbonation of the liquid. So basically all shaking does is speed up whatever process is going to happen naturally. That's why as I proved in two other videos, that when you have a brand new soda that you've never opened, when you shake it, it doesn't increase the pressure of the bottle because it's already at equilibrium. You've never opened it, so the headspace and the liquid are at the same partial pressure, and so there's no driving force to change from one to the other, so shaking it can't do anything. It can't increase the pressure. It's actually a big myth that shaking an unopened soda can increases the pressure. When you open a soda and decrease the pressure inside and then shake it again, that does increase the pressure back up to almost the initial starting pressure before you opened it. So people assume that when you haven't opened a soda, when you shake it, it will increase the pressure, but that's not true. It's at already as high of a pressure as it's going to get. It's already at equilibrium. But people have come back and said, they think it does increase the pressure because they shake the soda and they've had it explode in their hand sometimes, an unopened can of soda. But the only reason that can happen is one, your hand can heat it up, so you're slightly heating up the can, and also just the mechanical force of shaking it, the liquid sloshing back and forth, the can's at already a high pressure. And so you're increasing the stress on it and so it's more likely just to explode anyways, just to the mechanical force of you throwing a liquid at both sides of the can when you're shaking it. And another thing why people assume that when you shake an unopened can of soda, the pressure increases is because when you open it, it overflows. But the only reason that happens is because when you shake it, you make tiny little bubbles in the liquid. And then when you open it, you decrease the pressure so those bubbles expand really fast. And so it pushes all the soda up, all the bubbles expand, and it sprays all over. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's see if it's actually carbonated. Here's the Sprite. Let's listen to it open up. So it had a little pressure decrease when I opened it. There we go. Holy cow, that is sweet. <laughs> that is some very sweet soda. I'm like drinking corn syrup. But there's not really any carbonation. So I don't taste any carbonation whatsoever. Oh, that had a lot more. This one tastes way better than the Sprite does, but still, no carbonation at all. There may be a tiny little hint of it, more in the Coke than in the Sprite. The Sprite kind of has none, but the Coke I can feel the tiniest little bit of carbonation. Okay, so why didn't this work? Well, the reason is there's actually more CO2 in soda than you'd actually think. For example, Coke is carbonated to three volumes of CO2. And what that means is that for whatever given liquid you have, there's three times that volume of CO2 that are actually dissolved into it. Kind of weird to think. So that means to make a normal Coke soda, you need one bottle of liquid and then three bottles filled with CO2 and compress it all down and put it into the liquid bottle and then it will dissolve into the liquid and it'll pressurize the bottle. So the volume of Pop Rocks I had was only about that much in there 
and then the amount of CO2 that was actually in that pop rock was probably only like that much, and it was pressurized, but nowhere near the volume you need to actually pressurize and carbonate soda to the normal amount. So carbonating soda with pop rocks doesn't work. All you end up getting is some really, really sweet soda. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video is out. And check out theactionlab.com to check out the Action Lab subscription box. The first box is a mini vacuum chamber, which is really fun. You can do similar experiments. You could even decarbonate your soda like you saw me do in this video. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.